The blood of the bears is running through the streets of your neighborhood. Let's all say a prayer for them. Uh, because if we don't pull back soon, we may never pull back. Now, I'm going to make this short and sweet because somebody posted a, uh, I don't know, what's it called? A passive-aggressive insult on my YouTube page. Again, you realize nothing you could say on YouTube can insult me now because I'm demented already. If you think I'm upset about your comments or whatever, put it, put it, let's put it in perspective. I'll just give you one trait. DWTI. I had it short. Remember the video? What was it short? 420 and it went down to 411. Sorry, I made nine points on I think it was 100 shares. The stock's fallen 350 points since I covered. You think anything you could say to me could phase me at this point? I just watched a stock that I was short fall 400 points after I got out. Oh, oh, oh. You want to complain about a quarter here or a nickel here or what I do in a chat room? Or if I'm ugly or not funny? Come on. You know this is just for fun, right? You do realize my dad's been long to QQQ, right? All right, so let's get back to the let's get back to reality. Long-term investing versus day trading. Are you nuts? The guy says the truth hurts. The truth hurts. All I talk about is how the market never goes down. <laughs> Did you miss something, buddy? The market never goes down. I was convinced the last time they fixed the market back in 2002, where you felt that there was some spiritual guidance this market had. But then, of course, the real estate market got in the way of the stock market by, again, if you're going to be mad at somebody, go after some bankers. Go after the Moody's and the S&P guys who really tried to bring down capitalism. That's what you should be pissed off at, not me. I'm with you. I'm angry. It's not fair that everybody got away with all those crimes. They almost brought down capitalism in America and the global mark, the market system. But what that also proved to you is that it's all fake. If they could just make it go away by signing a few contracts and changing money from one place to the other, you do realize it's all fake, right? You do realize that it's all a house of lies and a house of mirrors, smoke and mirrors, whatever you're saying. It's all bullshit, but you can't get in its way. You don't have enough money. You don't have the unlimited funds. So the, the Greg Madden heroes and the Greg Hunters and all the people calling for doom and gloom and the market crashing, they don't have any money involved betting against the market because they'd be broke by now. It's fun to talk about. You want me to talk about it every day? Because I'm one of those guys. This is all bullshit. And not only is it bullshit because obviously we've had the best rally after the government stepped in and saved us. That's not a coincidence because it's fake. They're making it happen low interest rates, and they're pumping money into the system. But isn't it curious that the market was having, a tr was having trouble breaking out and hitting new highs before the Brexit? So it took a, mini a media manipulated event to drive the common folk out of the market. And the greatest move we've had of the year is a short squeeze. Because now the shorts are getting crushed again, and money poured out of the market, and then three days later, they're like, all right, well, what do we do with the money now? And then in comes the money back into the market. Round and round we go. Listen, when it does crash, or when it does finally turn into a real bear market, meaning rallies are sold into, rallies are sold into for a prolonged period of time, or crashes. I think the crash will be the crash that people are talking about, where we don't come back. 
for a decade. Where it goes down and stays down, like after 9-11, where we just bounced around the bottom for what seemed like an eternity. But eventually that turned into a rally also. There's just nowhere else to put your money. There's just nowhere else to put your money. Now, long-term investing, the truth hurts. That was my favorite comment probably ever. The truth hurts. Here's the truth. You want to come hang out with me, right? I talk about subscriptions and classes and whatnot. No, none of it. None of it's free. It's free. So you come in today, you hang out today. You come in Friday, you hang out Friday. Next week, you come in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Next what? The next week, still no credit cards, no obligations, no operators standing by, nothing. Guess what? Another week's go by. You still stay in the room. Another week go by. If you don't enjoy what's going on with me and my crew after a month and you don't see the value in it, someone who's there to talk about long-term investing, I talk about it all the time. Investing, trading, swing trading, day trading. Day trading is the most annoying thing in the world. It's the most awful thing in the world. But I show people, again, this is not about stock picks. I show people how if you want to day trade, you probably should follow these setups. That's it. And they don't work all the time. They work 80% of the time. But then we talk about risk management, money management, stop losses. Again, it's a learning experience that goes on forever. So I say hang out for a month. I got a guy in there, Steve, he's been in there for three months. He said, Ken, I'm, I'm not too sure what I want to do. I'm like, all right, Steve, you know what? For you, because you don't, you know, seems like a nice guy. I've been letting him hang out. I think it's been two months. And eventually I'll have to kick Steve out. But Steve's probably going to, you know, Steve's going to send me a case of vodka or something. I, I take vodka, you know. I've got two bottles of Patron over there. Very nice. I'll take ammunition. I'll take, you know, canned goods. I work on barter. I don't care. But the point is, come in and hang out. I'm the funniest, friendliest guy there is. All that spewing and foul language, it's just for comedy. Get to know me. It's really that simple. I don't claim that I know where Riggs going or F-E-Y-E, but I do know one thing for sure. My dad walked in while the Brexit sell-up was happening and laughed. He's like, oh, great. I guess we'll have to wait two weeks for the market to recover, maybe a month this time. And he went back outside and enjoyed the barbecue that I had prepared for him. And I'm sitting there going, but isn't this time different? He didn't even acknowledge that comment because it's a joke between us. Because it's never different. The only time it's going to be different is when it's different and nobody's going to know it's different. And people who keep saying that we're in a bubble, we're not in a bubble if we keep talking about being in a bubble. Bubbles happened in 1999 where we thought for sure this was different. We were pricing stocks differently. It was not based on earnings per share anymore. It was based on clicks on the internet and revenue. And it wasn't about earnings. You didn't have to make money anymore. And that obviously didn't work out. But guys, not about stock picks. I don't know where these stocks are going to go. And you could own AMD for the next six months, right? It goes from 350 to 7 and then something comes out that their chips are causing cancer and it goes right back to three bucks. I don't know. You can't predict these things. But I do know one thing. We did sell the VRX yesterday. Right before that market, before it tanked. Oh, sorry. It went up 50 cents after we sold it. But we were happy. It got back to 2409. We were like, all right, let's get the hell out of this thing. And we were tempted to buy it back. But let me go back to day trading, how it just, it rips your soul apart. Like the guy that blew his account up, shorting hog, and then it went down 10 points the next day. Or like me, selling out of any stock, 
I could give you a list of a thousand trades I did six months ago that I took losses on and none of them would have to be losses today, right? I'm sure I traded the Q's short somewhere. Or sorry, I'm sorry, I, sh I probably traded the QQQ long somewhere two months ago and lost money on it, where if I had just held it, I would have made money. All right. That's all. We don't have to be enemies here. It's fun for me to yell about it and, you know, pretend that I'm angry for, for comedy. Right? Isn't it more fun that way? I think it's more fun. Greg Manorino, I'm going to get you. Greg Hunter, you stink. You should feel bad for these guys because if they truly mean what they do, <laughs> if they truly mean what they mean and they're putting money in short positions, you should feel bad at this point. I feel bad. I know that short strangle ain't working out for me. I didn't think we'd be back to 112 on the Qs on July 14th. A bull. See that button? Doesn't work. I keep doing it. Woo! Go red team.